Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. Matthew's Anglican Church. I am the priest here, Reverend Philip Stonhouse, and Wednesdays over the summer, we've been exploring churches from throughout the world. And today we are in St. Nicholas, Prague in the Czech Republic. I thought this was a really special church um, for many reasons. It's gorgeous, like all of them. Um, but one of the things that stands out to me most is these veins of gold that seem to, well, especially lying underneath these, um, but go all the way around, sort of filter into a whole bunch of different places, images of angels. And, um, but it kind of gives me this image of a gold vein, of like a, a mine full of gold, where you get this already in this space there is this beautiful stonework this uh, marble um, this beautiful architecture but then there is like a crown of gold that goes through all of it it's like glory has been working through it flooding into its very being it reminds us of who we are in god god already made us beautiful already made us with such great potential. But then he wants to lift us up even more. He wants to make us like him, which we were already created to be, but we can be even more so. The other thing this reminds me of is that famous kind of artwork um, where someone would take a broken pot and instead of using glue to put it back together, they would use gold. And so you get these veins of gold going throughout and it's it turns the pot into something even more beautiful than when it was whole. I always love that idea of God taking our brokenness and making us more broken or more beautiful through it. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our readings about um, how we turn away from our sin and brokenness and turn to God, turn to his righteousness and holiness and eternal life. But already we can see a glimmer of that just within this place itself. So now we're going to take a moment um, just before we jump into the Book of Common Prayer to stop. To recognize that God is here. That he's present in every one of our lives. That he's speaking into our hearts and our minds. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses upon unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. I, shall gl I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold, manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, and the throne of the heavenly grace. Saying together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. There is no health in us. 
But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to their promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. The glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desired not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's say the Venite together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands have prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have known my, not known my ways, unto whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 132. You can find that on page 503 or 559 in the PDF. Or you can just follow it along on the image of it. Show you sharing. Let's say it together. Lord, remember David and all his trouble, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed a vow unto the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come within the tabernacle of mine house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not suffer mine eyes to sleep, nor mine eyelids to slumber, until I find out a place for the Lord, and habitation for the mighty one of Jacob. Lo, we heard of the same at Ephrathath, and found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his dwelling place, and fall low on our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints sing with joyfulness. For the servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord hath made a faithful oath unto David, and he shall not shrink from it. Of the fruit of thy body shall I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant, and my testimonies, that I shall teach them. The children shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath longed for her to be an habitation for himself. This shall be my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have a delight therein. I will bless her vit victuals with increase, with, will satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests and salvation with salvation. Their saints shall rejoice with singing. There shall I make the horn of David to flourish. I have ordained a lantern for my anointed. As for his enemies, I shall clothe with them with shame. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The readings for today are found on page 228 or 284. Our first reading is taken from Rome, uh, the letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching whereunto you were delivered. You were set free from sin and have become servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the weakness of your human nature. For just as you once offered your bodily members to serve uncleanliness, uncleanness, and to iniquity after iniquity, even so you now offer them as servants of righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit in unto holiness. And the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel for today is a gospel taken from Mark's eighth chapter, beginning at the first verse. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and say, saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way. For many of them came from a distance, and his disciples answered him, How can anyone satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people, and they had a few small fishes. And he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Now let's just take a moment to let that settle in. To let God speak into those readings that we just heard. Of what we are meant to hear this day. That Romans passage to me is quite interesting. I feel like there's more to it and it's it's a passage I need to reflect on more. But one of the things that is continuously repeated is the idea of freedom and slavery and being servants. I think we all want the idea of freedom None of us love the idea of being servants or slaves, mm -hmm. especially in a modern context with all the wrong that has been done through the idea. But I think we can look at our own lives and see that we are. We are already servants and slaves of many things. And many times 
we might convince ourselves otherwise. But, the th but there are many things. It might be our work. And it's not just that we don't want to go in, but that it consumes us. It might be our own desires. We become slaves to our own desires. What we want. And in a way, a desire cannot fill us. We can become desires to an idea. I mean, slaves to an idea. Servants to a way of being, a practice of defending and trying to uphold ourselves. We can become slaves to our own sin. A way that casts out others and ourselves, slaves to hatred, slaves to revenge, slaves to anger, slaves to greed. Paul in this passage says that I speak about the type of man because our nature is weak. In my mind, this is pointing to the fact that we are weak. We continually enslave our, slave ourselves to something. We need something to fill that gap. And so the question is, is what will we serve? What will we serve and where will that lead? If we serve desire, all it will lead is to more stuff that doesn't fill us and to more desire. If we follow our work, it will lead us to a uh, minor sense of accomplishment, which just pushes us to more and to feeling like we need to do more because there's always more work to do. Like we talked about two weeks ago in Mar Mary and Martha. If we follow greed, it's never going to be enough. Follow envy will never be good enough. There are so many things that we serve in this life. That don't doesn't actually serve us or this world. That doesn't actually lead to where it needs to lead. Even when we just choose to serve one other person, maybe a child, maybe a spouse. Even that is isolating. It removes the point of our love for others and our love for the world and our love for God. And so in this moment, Paul challenges us or let the writer to the Romans, it could have been Paul, to serve righteousness. To find that way of being, that life that might create and turn things right. We'll pray for in a second, but we should know that this is Jesus and God. He is the one that sets things right. But he has also written that in our creation, in our very lives, in the world around us. Brokenness might try to overthrow it. We must be servants to that righteousness, to forgiveness, to redemption to repentance, to healing, to relationship. We are called to do things right and to make things right. And we must remember that mercy is greater than justice in that. And then when we do that, that's when we become something more. 
when we follow God's righteousness, we are told that we become holy. Our very being is lifted up. Our very selves are filled. And it's like we are crowned in glory. Like that gold is veined into our very being. All that brokenness that was is now the very image of our beauty. And then where that finally leads is to eternal life. So if we just take that, righteousness leads to holiness. Serving righteousness leads to holiness, leads to eternal life. So we turn and follow God's righteousness wherever we see it, in whatever ways we hear about it. And that leads us to a closer relationship with God, who is the greatest and greater than all humanity, who could make us a greater human. Make us more special. Will then lead us to full communion with him, which is eternal life. Because he is eternal. That passage from Mark, which is a very pivotal one, about the feeding of the 4,000 is the, actually the second feeding of the multitude in the Gospel of Mark. And it's funny because the disciples don't quite get it yet, but Jesus is still very patient with them. They have seven loaves of bread, and they get seven basketfuls. It reminds us of where we need to turn, that we are that weak natured, we don't have enough, we don't see that there is enough. We don't see how we can solve something, how we can do what is right, how we can serve. But they follow Jesus. Something beautiful happens and they are filled. They find rest and they create greater rest. Seven uh, is a very special number that means per perfection. It's very strongly related to perfection, at least, um, or wholeness, actually, not perfection. That's a misnomer to some degree, but uh, that's what they're pointing to us in this moment. In some way, it's saying the same thing. Serve righteousness leads to fullness, to holiness, which then leads to eternal life, to there being more than enough. Amen. Our service continues on page 10 or page 66 in the PDF. Let us say together the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the queen and mercifully hear us when we call unto thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. 
Give peace in the time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy, and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for Sue Stokes, Martin and Debbie Sudeiko, Melissa and Mark, their children, Sherry Tack, Derek and Iris Taylor, Al and Thoris Thompson, Leanne Thompson and her children, Brianna and Cassidy, Jerry Tilker, Tom Travagli, Travaglini, Bill Twydale, and Grace Upshaw. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessings. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we humbly beseech thee all for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it be, may, so, may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, estate. This time we pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for Sylvia, Francis, and Richard, B, Hubert, and Theo, Lois, Suterum, Margaret, Merv, and Barbara. I invite you now to share any names that are on your own heart. If you have anyone you'd like to, us to pray for, feel free to put it in the chat box. Pray for them that, them that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We offer up our thanks now for all those things in this life that we love, that fill us with your joy and light. I 
Thank you for new children and for new life. For new life in us. For hope and redemption. Lord God, we bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this one at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let's say the grace together. Actually, first, the peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I hope you're having a lovely summer and enjoying all this lovely weather and escaping the heat when you need to. But I look forward to seeing you whenever I get the chance. Uh, God bless you and talk to you soon. Bye everyone.